Hello, Charles Aro here, and thank you for watching my latest tutorial on how to use After Effects basic animation. So first thing we want to do is create a composition. Click this icon here, and we're going to do a 720 by 480 uh, pixels, and we're going to use um, square pixels, and that's going to be our aspect ratio at 29.97 frames per second, and we're going to make our um, timeline 30 seconds. Click OK and we're good to go. Now I didn't name this anything because it's not a fancy um, timeline, it's just, just a regular composition that we're going to use for the purpose of this um, tutorial. So first thing we want to do is go ahead and bring in our footage. I'm going to bring in a picture of me, something I already cropped out and it's ready to go. Uh, we can either drag it into our timeline or we can drag it onto the composition um, inside the viewer. And let's just go ahead and drag it there. It'll automatically make the picture the same length as the timeline, so you don't have to worry about making sure it's adjusted right or not, and it's where you want it to be. Sorry about that. If you can hear my cat crying, he wants to go outside. It's a little needy little thing, but I gotta love him. All right, back to editing. So first thing we want to do is learn how to do basic animation. Uh, for this tutorial, we're going to animate the scale. We're going to animate the rotation, and we're going to animate the position. You can animate almost anything you want in this uh, program. You can animate the opacity. You can animate effects that you put onto things. Uh, anything you want to animate, you almost can. But for now, we're just going to learn how to animate basic things using simple keyframe. So first thing we want to do is click this icon right here. This allows us to drop down the transform menu and click this icon again and here we go we get anchor point position scale rotation opacity these five things come with every single item you import into after effects no matter what it is they always have these five items so you never have to worry about looking for them just look for transform you're good to go first thing we want to do is animate the position so one little trick i like to do is instead of clicking the current time indicator and moving it throughout my composition or my timeline um, let's say I only want to go for 10 seconds from the beginning of the, the timeline. If you hold down Command for Mac users and Control for, um, for PC users and press right, you will see the header actually move. So we're going to go all the way over to 10 um, frames and we're going to go to Position, click the stopwatch and indicate that we want to use keyframings for everything we do under the position. Now, what we're doing is we're going to animate that we want at the 10th frame, the picture's going to be right here. What we need to do now is go a couple frames before that. Now, how many frames you use is up to you. The less amount of frames usually makes it move faster. The more amount of frames makes it move slower. But then also the distance can play a huge role in how fast the item swoops in, disappears, gets bigger, anything, whatever. Uh, let's go ahead and do the same thing I just said. Hold down the command button, or for PC users, um, hold down control, and press left this time so we can go backwards. And we're going to go all the way to the beginning of the timeline, back to zero. Okay, now we need to animate where we want this picture to come from. So it could land right here. What we're going to do is we're going to click your picture and you're going to move it all the way over to the left until you don't see it on your screen anymore. Now, that's assuming you're zoomed in at 50. If you're zooming in at 100, then this is what it'll look like. It'll be that close. Um, or as, as big as the composition can be. Um, but we're going to go back to 50%. Now, if I press spacebar, which will allow me to render uh, or do a pre-render and see what it'll look like, we'll see the animation actually animate. So let's press enter. Boom. It just slid right through. Now let's see it again in real time without any rendering. Boom. Slid right through. Now, to make your animation look that much better, I'm going to show you how to add motion blur. So let's go back to the beginning of the comp. And you want to click this icon right here. Enables motion blur for all layers with the motion blur switch set. Now that means if you turn this on, Whichever layer that's in your composition, you activate motion blur, that layer will now have motion blur inside of your composition or inside your viewer. So this is the box that you want to check. You click this box here, that activates motion blur on me, and this box here activates motion blur on the whole comp, 
And now let's press it on the spacebar. Boom. Now you saw that render in a very slow motion, but you see that blur right there? You see the blur? Now let's play it in real time. Boom. Boom. It's that simple. And you can animate wherever you want something to go, whenever you want it to go. Um, and so now we're going to do something a lot cooler. I'm going to make the picture a little smaller. We're going to make it about this big. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to set a keyframe at two seconds. Okay. Set a keyframe at two seconds for, let's say we're going to do it for scale. All right. We'll pick one for scale. And we're going to um, pick one for position. Now, um, one thing I forgot to mention is when you initially set your first keyframe and you change um, the position at any other frame, it will automatically create a keyframe for you. You don't have to press any other buttons. You just change the position, the scale, the rotation. It will automatically add another keyframe for you. And to show you just that, I'll actually go back 10 frames. Go back to 1 second and 20 frames. And I will... If you watch right here, you see there's no keyframe. I'll take this image and actually move it to the bottom corner right there. And you see a keyframe already gets created because there was already another keyframe on there. Now, I'm going to go ahead and delete these two keyframes. Um, you can either select the keyframe by just clicking it and delete. Click and delete. Or you can just select over top of them like you would do like you on your desktop and then just delete uh, but we're gonna start our keyframe or we're gonna start our picture right here move back over 10 spaces because I never set the initial position so we're gonna go ahead and move this to the top right corner okay um, and just to kinda show you the animation for that you're just gonna see it move to the top corner Boom. alright now we gotta go back to one minute or one second and 20 frames and change the scale. Let's go ahead and make this smaller. We're gonna make it, let's say, 30%. All right, now watch. Boom. Now remember, previously I had set this keyframe to 62% added scalability, and this frame I set at 30, so in a matter of 10 frames, it increases its size. And that's simple. Boom. Okay. And the last element I'd like to include is rotation. So let's go to the end point, which is two seconds. Let's go ahead and add a, a keyframe for rotation. Remember, you always have to add a keyframe if it's the first keyframe. Afterwards, you can just change the position, rotation, or scale, and it'll automatically add one in. So click a stopwatch. Let's go back 10 frames. And now this is where it gets fun. You can choose how many degrees you want it to start at or you want it to end at. We're going to have it start, let's say, at a full 360 uh, degree angle. Um, we're going to go ahead and put this back at zero. And instead of clicking this and putting it all the way up to 360, you can actually just click this number here and press 1. And that's telling the keyframes that we're going to do a full rotation. So if I press enter, boom, you see that? It just did it. It just spun like a deck of cards or like a single card. Boom. And that's animation. Thank you for watching my basic animation how-to video. If you have any questions, anything you'd like to learn, feel free to send me a message in my inbox. Um, or you can send me a message at contact at charlesherow.com. Or you can leave a suggestion in the moderator on my YouTube channel. Again, I thank you for watching this and have a wonderful day.